From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. SBA launches cybersecurity program. The U.S. Small Business Administration launched the Cybersecurity for Small Business Pilot Program, offering $3 million in grants to help smaller organizations improve their security posture. These funds can be used by smaller firms across industries for security training, counseling, and remediation services. This pilot will only accept applications from January 26th through March 3rd. The hope is that this will help smaller firms shore up cybersecurity infrastructure before getting hit with an attack, which could pose more of an existential risk given their smaller size. Ransomware gangs step up insider recruitment. According to a Hitachi IT survey of 100 large IT firms, 65% of firms report that they or their employees were approached by ransomware organizations in the past year to establish an initial access to an organization's network. This is up from 48% last year. Of those approached, 27% were over the phone, although the vast majority used email or social media to contact potential insiders. 57% of the offers involved either cash or Bitcoin transfers below $500,000. Interestingly, getting the help of an insider seemed tangential to a ransomware gang's plans, with targeted organizations attacked 50% of the time anyway. The survey found only 8% of IT executives were more worried about internal threats than external. American Olympians warned to take cybersecurity precautions. The Wall Street Journal sources say the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee notified athletes last month that every device, communication, transaction, and online activity may be monitored. Your devices may also be compromised with malicious software, which could negatively impact future use. This also included a recommendation to leave personal devices at home and use a one-off burner phone. This comes after researchers at the University of Toronto discovered the official app for the Olympics was rife with security and privacy issues. We covered it on the show last week. The Chinese government is allowing athletes to access sites normally blocked during the games, including Facebook and YouTube. Australian Prime Minister loses access to WeChat account. The office of the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison reported it lost access to its WeChat account in July. The account retained the PM's 76,000 followers. It changed its name to Australia China New Life in January and notified users that it would promote Chinese life in Australia. So this was a social engineering attack that obtained access to a prominent channel used by a head of government to disseminate misinformation? It doesn't look that way. The Chinese firm Fuzhou 985 Technology acquired the WeChat account, and according to an employee, the company bought the account because it had a large fan base but was unaware it was connected to Morrison. The account was obtained by Morrison's office through an agent and registered with an individual in mainland China, who apparently sold it to the Chinese firm. And now a word from our sponsor, DeepWatch. Increasing ransomware attacks and their evolving sophistication have been putting more pressure on security teams than ever before. Luckily, Managed Detection and Response, or MDR, has emerged as a critical component for improving security operations, reducing ransomware risk, and minimizing the overall impact an attack can have. Visit DeepWatch.com to see how they can help to prevent breaches for their customers by working together. Tor appeals block in Russia. The Tor project and the Russian digital rights organization Roskoms Voboda filed an appeal to a decision by the Saratov District Court to block the Torproject.org website in Russia. The site was blocked in December 2021, as well as public proxy servers and some bridges. Tor argues the decision was not based on any particular content, saying the ban violates the constitutional right to freely provide, receive, and disseminate information and protect privacy. Russian users account for the second largest Tor user base, with over 300,000 daily users. CWP bug opens the door to root execution on Linux. Security researchers at Octagon Networks discovered two flaws in the popular Linux control panel CWP, previously known as CentOS Web Panel, that could be chained to gain remote code execution as root on a server. CWP is supported by CentOS, Rocky Linux, Alma Linux, and Oracle Linux. A file inclusion vulnerability could let an attacker register for an API key and write a new key using a file write flaw. The researchers say they will release a proof-of-concept code once enough systems are upgraded to a patched CWP version. Bleeping Computer found 80,000 internet-exposed CWP servers online. German publishers push back on Google's cookie sunsetting. The Financial Times reports that a group of hundred of German publishers, advertisers, and trade groups filed a complaint with EU competition chief Marguerite Vestager, arguing that Google's plan to sunset support for third-party cookies in Chrome, part of its overall privacy sandbox initiative, breaches EU competition laws. 
The publishers argue that Google's proposed cookie replacement is insufficient, as they must be allowed to ask for user consent to process ad targeting data without Google capturing this decision, arguing Google's system would be interfering in a relationship with users. Google also currently faces two antitrust investigations in Germany, with one involving its new showcase product, so its relationship with German publishers was already on rocky ground. Microsoft restricts all Excel macros by default. Ah, macros, literal application shortcuts that provide an example of the convenience versus security spectrum. Given their ability to execute malicious code, Microsoft has been gradually restricting their use. In 2016, macros were turned off by default in Office. Then, last July, administrators had the option to restrict the use of Excel 4.0 XML macros. Now, the latest build of Excel restricts all Excel 4.0 macros by default. Admins can still allow these to be used, but they must be enabled in the Excel Trust Center as a group policy setting. That just about does it for today's episode of Cybersecurity Headlines. If you can't wait for tomorrow's episode to get some more cybersecurity goodness, why not check out the latest episode of the CISO Security Vendor Relationship Podcast? It's entitled, Why We Quickly Reject 95% of All Applicants, and looks into why breaking into cybersecurity is hard to do for new applicants. Often hiring managers are looking for a few years behind a help desk, certifications, and personal references. This not only challenges new people entering into the industry, but also leads to organizations that lack diversity. So how can organizations and hiring managers bring on people that they can trust without this background? Be sure to subscribe to hear the episode in your favorite podcast app, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.